Okay, today I'm going to be setting up some homing switches and I'm going to use these uh, this little proximity sensor here. This this one, a couple of these came with this uh, Z-axis assembly that I bought online. And uh, this one uses 10 to 30 volts DC to power it. And I've got a couple of uh, barrel proximity sensors coming. They'll be here in a couple of days. Uh, and they use, I think, between 10 and 36. So I need to add another power supply to provide power to those uh, in my controller box down here. So I've got this, uh, this little power supply that I bought. And this has three different uh, DC voltages you can get. If you connect to the plus five volts here in the common, you'll get five volts DC. If you connect to the V3 in the common, you'll get 12 volts DC. And if you connect to the V2 in the common, as I have here, you'll get 24 volts DC. So that's what I'm looking for. That will fall in between that 10 and 30 volts DC there. And I'm just going to use this as a little distribution block. So I will tie all my, all my uh, proximity sensors into this for power. And then with the, they all have three wires. The brown is uh, positive, the blue is negative, and the black is the output wire that will go to the pin that will read the signal over in the MASO. So I've got to get this installed in the box and then I've got to tie this into my 110 distribution block so that I can power this up. So let's get that, get that started. Okay, I got the power supply mounted here. I used a 3D printed bracket and just fastened the power supply to that and then put a couple of screws up here to hang this up here. I've got the uh, 110 running back to the distribution block there, so it should give this power. And then I've got the 24 volts coming off of here and going down to this block. So let's uh, turn it on and check with the meter and see if we're getting uh, 24 volts. Everything's powering up, the lot, green light's on. So let's check and see what we are getting here. We should be able to get over here on the positive side and then over here on the negative side. And I'm not sure if you can see that we're getting 24.3 volts DC, so that will work perfect. Let me see if I can. I don't know if I can do this one-handed we'll see if I can and there we go now it's showing 24.2 there so we're in good shape there now we'll be able to connect all of our uh, proximity switches to the 24 volts here and then we'll run the the output signal through there that DB25 connector and it will run over to the to the Masso. Okay, I wanted to show you all this. This uh, Z-axis assembly that I bought online, it came with this little metal pointer thing. Uh, and I assumed that that's what they had planned to work with these uh, proximity sensors that they also included it with this. But I have found that even bending this around or whatever, this little finger that's right here, it's not near big enough to uh, to do anything. You need something much, uh, with a little more mass, I guess, before that works. So what I've done is I've made my own uh, little angle thing that's going to go right here, and it will uh, trigger that sensor much better. So. Uh, I'm going to swap that out real quick. Okay. 
Okay, now I'll test it and see if uh, see if that's going to work. And you can see he triggered it. I might have been jogging a little bit fast. Let me uh, slow it down. Okay, now we'll bring it up a little slower. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's going to work fine. So, um, yeah, just beware if you buy one of these. This, this little thing does not have enough, uh, I guess doesn't have enough mass to make that thing trigger. So, you may have to make your own little bracket like I did. Okay, let's try homing it with the new bracket installed on the Z-axis. Okay, this is future Dave. Uh, that squealing you hear is the tab was too long and it was rubbing against the side there as it went up. So I had to pull it back off and grind it off. So we're all, all good right, now. Looks like that works. Now it's on to the X and the Y. For the X axis, I used my 3D printer to make a bracket that extends over the drag chain to mount the proximity sensor and is triggered by a small aluminum angle that's adjustable in the T-slot. You probably can't see it, but there's an angle on the other end as well. On the Y-axis, I drilled a hole in the back right side of the machine frame and installed a proximity sensor so that it protrudes enough to be triggered by the gantry aluminum upright. I really like the Masso controller because they make it super easy to set up the homing sequence. Here you can see that the Z-axis will home first then the x-axis and the y-axis will home together at the same time. Okay, now that they're all wired up, let's see if it homes. My machine home position will be in the back right corner of the machine. Okay, that looks good. For right now, I'm just going to use those three homing sensors, and I've got the soft limits turned on, so I shouldn't be crashing the machine into the frame. At least I hope not. If you watched my previous video of this build, you know that I used my Ohmtech CO2 laser to make the small box that housed the Masso controller. The weight of the monitor mounted to the lid of the box proved to be too much for that hinge lid. It busted apart, so I just used a scrap piece of half-inch plywood to mount the monitor, keyboard, e-stop, and USB to the front side and mounted the Masso controller and the other components in the back side. You might also notice that the 12 volt power supply that I was using to power the Masso controller is no longer there. Since I had to put the 24 volt power supply in the big box to power the proximity homing sensors, I just ran a couple of wires to pin 14 and the ground on the DB25 breakout board and then made a 24 volt distribution block that you see here. The Masso controller can use 12 volts or 24 volts for power. If you want to check out some of the parts and components I've used with this build, there will be links below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a thumbs up. It doesn't cost anything and it helps keep the YouTube algorithm gods happy. If you want to see what I do next with this machine, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you'll get a notification when I upload a new video. Until the next one, thank you very much for watching.